It's been a while since we've gone through the items that are required to rebuild your hand warmer and how to use them. So we're going to do a quick run through of the evolution of the hand warmer rebuild items and where we're at today with what's available and more importantly how to use them. <coughs> First items on the order form are the spring and catalyst and here you see this is what is in that kit what you get is one empty spring and a platinum catalyst pad here which is 1.25 inches by one inch now that's enough to uh, repack these springs two of these springs and how you would do that would be we have one here. You would take this pad and you would cut it in half with your scissors longitudinally. So now you've got two pieces and after you've opened the little plastic case they come apart like this and so you're going to end up with two pieces that are fucked up like that. And whether you're using the thick John E spring which also fits some of the larger heads that are on some of the Chinese butterfly hand warmers like the round ones it would be the same procedure. <clears throat> You'll take your pad and you can compress it a bit and get it between your tweezers like that and then you will insert it into the spring like so. And there's the completed spring ready to go. This pad is cut to 1.25 on purpose because when it compresses into the head of the hand warmer it will match. Now with that kit you get one spring and that would allow you to <clears throat> repack that spring twice which would be suitable for one hand warmer. What if you've got a couple of hand warmers? Well, you can either buy extra springs or if you don't want to uh, do this procedure yourself, you don't have tweezers like this to compress it with, you can just buy them pre-packed. And there's enough there to do the two, which is it's the equivalent of one of these pads. And they come packed in a straw like that to protect them from getting shredded. The platinum catalyst material is fairly delicate and it doesn't like to go through the mail system however we found that these containers do protect them and they are arriving at their destinations intact and usable ditto for packing the springs this way so that's how the two springs arrive if you order those and can choose up to five sets of those. How do I use one of these springs? That question comes up a lot. So we have a head. This one happens to be from a Chinese hand warmer. And we want to put our new catalyst in there. Let's assume this one, this one's new, but it's all burned out. Technique is the same. There's different styles of retainers that you find in the heads. Um, some may look like that. And uh, they come in various forms, but they all share the same characteristic that you can pull them out simply like that. And then you have this 
Chinese Catalyst, which we are going to pull out and discard. Now we have the empty head. And in some heads, the thing to watch out for are these little tabs that are angled at 90 degrees that were originally put there to hold the original catalyst in. We don't need those anymore and they will obstruct the insertion of the spring. So we're going to straighten those out with a pair of pliers. Or and then you just angle this spring in as best you can it's important to get that space in there. Uh, often the question comes up, should this catalyst be touching the carbon felt or cotton in the reservoir? No, it should not. You don't want this catalyst to get wet and contaminated with naphtha liquid fuel. This works on oxidizing the fumes by having a chemical reaction. It's an exothermic reaction that creates the heat. It needs fumes. It does not need liquid. It does not burn liquid. The carbon felt strip kit. You get two random sized pieces that are roughly something like that. And typically you could use that as a barrier strip to stop the cotton in the reservoir from your hand warmer from getting charred and we are going to illustrate the use of inserting one of those into a hand warmer to stop it the cotton from getting charred from overheat and we're going to do that illustration with an S Boston because I have to do it anyway now you'll see in the hand warmer you have white cotton at the top right there and what you're wanting to do is put a barrier of carbon felt between the head and the cotton in the reservoir. This is just about double the width of an average hand warmer. So for most of these strip kits, you can just cut them in half, as so. And then you can use a pair of forceps, such as this. Take the forceps and insert the carbon felt such as that. And now we'll see you have a barrier between the cotton and your head and that'll stop the cotton from getting charred. Then you can do three other hand warmers with just those two pieces of the carbon felt from the strip kit. The carbon felt pad. Why, you may ask, would I need to get this big pad when a couple of strips will do four hand warmers? The answer would be either you want to do like 20 hand warmers or you would like to replace the entire reservoir cotton ballast with carbon felt. Why would I want to do that? It might be because of odor <coughs> mitigation. You, uh, carbon of course as you know is a filter material and it will help eliminate the odors from the naphtha. So it is possible to pull all the cotton out of the reservoir of your hand warmer, no matter which type it is, and replace it by cutting your carbon felt into strips and then sticking the strips into the reservoir after you've pulled all the cotton out. In this case, for example, we're looking at a Zippo. It's just got a top 
strip on it. If I was going to do that operation, I would cut these bars out. They really have no purpose. In fact, your hand warmer could theoretically work better without a barrier for the evaporation of the fumes that's presented by these bars. So you cut those out. You can even expand that area there a little bit. And then you can pull everything out of there and replace it with all carbon felt from your pad. And as you can see, you could expect to probably repack two hand warmers, the entire reservoir, by putting strips of carbon felt in. It doesn't have to be particularly that dense. However, you will notice that the S Boston's have very dense packing on their cotton and they seem to work very well with that method. Just put whatever you can get in there comfortably. And here's a good example of what my Zippo looks like with the spring in the head. The S Boston hand warmer. This is very the standard stock hand warmer which we have realized that you can improve by providing a value added service. So what I have done is notice that they can greatly benefit also by the insertion of a carbon felt strip. And again that goes in there. There is another video on how to replace this catalyst when this one gets used. However, the catalyst that comes in it does work very well. It's much better catalyst material than the Chinese hand warmers and it should last a couple of seasons. In order, oh one other thing to mention, um, you can reverse the head and then cut off the fumes and then relight it again. In reality I find that function um, convenient in that I can just do this and it quits smelling in my pocket and it stuffs it off on a long multi-day backcountry trip when you are trying to conserve fuel that can have some advantage but I prefer to refill mine every night and start with a fresh one. Also uh, it's worth mentioning that I've had some clients who for one reason or another have perhaps broken their battery compartment tab or something like that. That is not necessarily fatal because once you've placed this catalyst on top of the reservoir in the right orientation, you can take your lighter and put the flame in through here. And if you hold it like that and put the flame in, that it's sufficient to get it going. So in other words, you'd do like that. And you'd hold it in that hole, and that's what you would get. In order to make the S Boston a little more functional, what I have been doing, and make it a lucrative deal in order to source from our order form, is throw in an extra pad which will get you two refills for this and you get this empty refiller bottle with it so it seems to make sense that because it's packaged in there anyway empty I fill that up with deodorizer it is terpenes so don't fill your hand warmer with it this is enough deodorizer to treat, see it's 15 cc, so this will treat one liter of naphtha. So put your naphtha into a one liter container and add this, then fill this back up again with your deodorized naphtha and now you've got enough for one fill for the S Boston. So that's what you get in the S Boston. You get a carbon felt strip installed on the top of the cotton. You get an extra platinum catalyst pad. You get deodorizer in the bottle. 
and that is what the value added concept is to that. Is that a better deal? The carbon felt strip is only worth about a dollar fifty if you had to buy it and do it yourself. This pad about six dollars and the deodorizer about four. So you are roughly gaining about a twelve dollar advantage because the S Boston's price is the same as that which you will find on Amazon. The USB lighter. When I was young I used to be a bit of a gearhead equipment junkie. I'd go on these long multi-day trips where I'd be so keen to save some weight I would shave my armpits and cut the bristles on my toothbrush in half. Now however, at my advanced age group I would much rather air on the side of a craft beer in my armchair. A big long multi-day trip for me is trying to find my car in the driveway for my trip to the post office to ship the hand warmer items. However, there is still, for those of you younger than me, the option of not having to put up with a butane lighter that runs out and the wind blows out and so on especially uh, I've always been a non-smoker and I found these USB lighters to be rather intriguing. It's lightweight, doesn't require fuel and I'd say the only caveat is always make sure that you have a full charge when you're taking off. And what I like about them is, is they are not dependent on how cold it is or atmospheric air pressure and to a large extent they're impervious to humidity. The way that you use them with a hand warmer these ones have got a safety switch on them and you have to move it. When it's to the top you move it to the left. Then you slide it up and you'll see you get an arc and then you press the arc or you push the arc over so it's near the hand warmer head. If it's too close one of the sides of the arc might ground onto the hand warmer head and then it'll go out and if it does you start it again. And eventually when you see an orange glow you can know your head is lit. So this <coughs> has got mixed blessings. It is a little more finicky to use to get your hand warmer going. Um, you can see there now I'm seeing an orange glow when I get it near the catalyst and that signals to me that the catalyst is starting the exothermic reaction and that seems to be on all three. Um, it doesn't blow out and it does work however it can short and then go out and then you need to redo it. There you can see the spark I hope and in order to recharge you push the USB out the opposite end plug that into your USB charger and if you have an uncle named Bob then you know the story. Now deodorizer is an interesting saga and evolution. So the deodorizer is comprised of a blend of terpenes and the reason for the terpenes is for supporting the exothermic reaction that the catalyst requires. It doesn't contaminate the catalyst and it works to deodorize the naphtha fuel. So that's how we arrived at that after discussing all these options with our catalyst 
expert that we have dealt with for years who has now left the company and gone back for his PhD. So I fill them, I fill this bottle up from our, um, we have a barrel of it, and I fill from there. Now what I first started doing was I had a great idea. I could fill these bottles which are used for the vaping community and I don't think I've got they have these great little filler tips on them that work great for filling the hand warmer. So this is the 30 mil bottle and this is the 15 mil bottle. Here's a bottle that comes with the S Boston and I believe here's another 30 mil bottle. But the problem with these are is they are right at about two centimeters in thickness. And guess what? Canada Post. There was a lady somewhere in Winnipeg that started recognizing my envelopes. And she realized that my packages, by the time I added the width of the envelope, was possibly 10% wider than two centimeters and she would send them all back to me and how do I know it was the one person? It was always the same handwriting on the return to sender label and the odd one package would get through and I realized that those packages were getting through if they hit the Winnipeg sorting office about the time that this person probably had their days off. So I had to rethink all this because I couldn't really start to try and work around this person in Winnipeg and I apologize again the writing really appeared to be the writing that I associate with feminine writing. By the way this is heating up now this hand warmer so the USB lighter did work. So if you're ordering an order like the S Boston or something where you're getting the small packet or tracking method of shipping by all means take advantage and get some of these containers filled with terpenes they are a great thing to be using with your hand warmer for refilling it however if you're just going for an economy order with a couple of springs and some catalyst and you want the cheap shipping method then what we've been doing is sealing terpenes into straws. Have a look at this straw and here's the caveat. This straw is probably a month or more old and it's flat and it's collapsed and it looks to me like the 13 to or 12 mils of terpenes that were in there have now diminished down to half of that. The straw is not leaking so I don't know what that means. I think I'm getting some kind of transpiration of the terpenes right through the plastic material. Uh, transpiration, sublimation, I'm not really sure. But so I fill these up just before we ship. And on your end, it's important to realize if you just leave them like that, you're going to end up with something like that. So as soon as you get it, you add it to one liter of naphtha in order to deodorize it. If you want to go with stronger deodorizer you could always do two of these into one liter. It's kind of personal preference. It's like doing cooking or on a recipe. You work out what works best for you. The terpenes won't adversely affect the exothermic reaction. I generally use about 15 13, somewhere in that area, mils of terpenes to deodorize one liter of naphtha. Before concluding, I would like to say one last word about how the payment and shipping process works. The payment process for U.S. customers is via PayPal and for Canadian customers through Interact. International customers also PayPal and all of them are in US dollars. However, for Canadian customers, it is converted at the current spot exchange rate plus 2% on top of spot, which is 
still better than the exchange rate that banks like Toronto Dominion would give you where they charge you 4.5 on top of spot. When the order comes in, it's on this funky order form on Google Docs, so you're not paying extra for me to cover the cost of some sort of form service. Then I take that information and I send out a payment request. When you get that request, you have two options. One is the donate method, and that allows me to send it through letter post because I don't need to use the tracking method, which is required by PayPal for a goods and services transaction, which is more or less the default method that PayPal uses. If you do want buyer protection and you want to pay the extra for tracking, then that is available. It's an extra $15 to provide the tracking method of shipping, which from Canada Post is called expedited parcel or small packet tracking. Those options are both on the payment request. Some people seem to be able to circumvent that request which, by the way, doesn't seem to work very well on an Android or an iOS device, whether it be a phone or a tablet. It seems to work well on desktop computers that are running Windows. So, I send the payment request. It comes back and I get notified in my email that there has been a payment made. I go look at it and I match it to the order form. Once it's matched, I then print the appropriate label which fills the order and here's an example of the label. Then I stack all the labels up right here on this same desk and I start going through them and I start filling them based upon the contents. Once I've done that, I lay all the items out, I take a picture of them, right here with an auxiliary phone like this and the first thing I do is take a picture and then I send it out or sorry I don't send it out I take the picture I put it off to the side and then I package everything up and I take another picture of the package and then that picture two images gets sent off to the client which will give them some idea of when to expect their package because now they know when it's shipped. This either ships the next day if the image comes out to you late around midnight or the same day if the image came out to you before noon on that day. Shipping to the States is typically 8 to 10 working days, not including the weekends, for letter post. Letter post goes faster than tracking. Why? Because tracking requires more layers of scanning and registering the packages as it goes through the system. Letter post does not suffer with that. In fact, when we went through the Canada Post strike and the Christmas season, Clients who use letter post were getting their packages in record time because all the other ones were queued up for processing. That's how this one works. If you do require buyer protection, then you pick the pay now button that you get on the request. That will add $15 on to the price, which will pay for the tracking method of shipping. The choice is up to you. If you feel that you might get scammed by the seller and you need PayPal protection, then you need to go with a tracking method. If you have confidence that the seller is not scamming you and you will get your package, then you can use the dominate method, which means the seller 
does not have to ship using tracking. There's yet another method that's slightly cheaper because PayPal does not charge fees for friends and family style of payments. However, I found that most users found it extremely difficult to achieve success with trying to make that method of payment to me in order to save a 30 cent set fee and 2.9% in PayPal fees, which is possible if you know how to use that method. However, it's simpler to either use the donate or the pay now. I recommend the donate paying the 30 cent fee plus 2.9 percent on an order that is perhaps 20 or 30 dollars is not really going to make it so you can't put food on the table for the kids or pick up an extra craft beer when you head down and well come to think of it if you're in the states probably most of your craft beer is not worth drinking anyway so I wouldn't really worry about it